You're flying over the Sahara Desert in a small, light aircraft when you spot something truly weird. It seems to belong to a very different part of the world, the ocean. But what ocean can be huge enough for this monstrous sea star to dwell there? You descend and realize that it's not a sea star. It's a towering dune with a pretty unique shape, and it's not alone. From afar, these magnificent sand structures look a bit like pyramids. They have pointed tops and radiating arms. Called star dunes, they're the most complex and largest desert dunes in the world. They're the tallest of their kind, but that's not the coolest thing about them. Researchers have found similar formations on Mars and even on one of Saturn's moons, Titan. Star dunes aren't super rare, but they're especially widespread in southeastern Morocco, near the border with Algeria. That's where you're flying at the moment, and the breathtaking dune you're marveling at is Lela Lalia, probably the most famous of them all, a giant 330 feet tall. Scientists believe that it formed in less than 1,000 years. How about doing some research to find out more about these unusual formations? There, I see a great spot for landing. Star dunes got their name because of their multi-armed shapes. They form in areas where winds change direction throughout the year. But even though you can find them in different places on our planet, there is just one confirmed star dune in the rock record, the collective record of Earth's development reflected in preserved rocks. The star dune in question is in Scotland, and it's ancient, from about 250 million years ago. That's all we know about super old star dunes probably because we don't know what to look for to identify one. Another problem. Star dunes often form in remote locations, which makes them extremely difficult to study. Imagine reaching the nearest settlement, then somehow traveling who knows how many miles to the dune itself, and then slogging up several hundred feet of shifting sand. I'll pass. But you can go since you've already landed, and the dune is right here in front of you. Currently, you're in a dune field called Erg Shabi. Lucky for you, this area has long become a popular tourist stop. Look, in the distance, there are hotels and even a good road. Scientists who examined Lela Lalia before you used ground-penetrating radar to find out more about the sand formation. This equipment can detect the tiniest differences in sand grain sizes and water content under the surface of the dune. That's how you can create a picture of its interior layers. Look out! Phew, it was a close call. See this trench? The researchers dug such trenches to take samples of long buried sands and then examined them. It's a pretty cool process. The thing is, while buried deep inside, the quartz in the sand accumulates radiation coming from natural sources within our planet. We can compare the grains of quartz to minuscule rechargeable batteries they can store the energy they get from radiation. When researchers bring them to the laboratory, they can make the grains release that energy, which comes out in the form of light. Scientists can measure the brightness and say when the sand enjoyed sunlight for the last time. Now, when those experts who dug the trenches looked inside Lela Lalia, they were shocked. The enormous formation turned out to be very young, for a dune, of course. You'd expect a dune that is several hundred feet tall to be pretty old, like thousands or tens of thousands of years. But that wasn't the case. Well, at least not entirely. The upper part of the dune has turned 900 just recently. But look at the sand near the base of the dune. Yep, right there. Well, it was buried there around 12 or 13,000 years ago, representing ancient dunes in the area. Those good old dunes were active for a couple thousand years, and then something went wrong. Because for a whopping 8,000 years, the sand wasn't accumulating there. A mystery? Scientists might have an explanation. You see, the first part of this quiet period occurred during the time when the climate became warm and wet. Yep, even in the Sahara. It happened about 11,700 years ago. It was the end of the last ice age and the beginning of a new era the Holocene. And guess what? The Sahara went green. It started blooming like your local botanic garden. Plants started popping up all over the place, stabilizing the sand. 
If you had visited the Sahara during that period, you wouldn't have recognized this place. But you would have likely come across humans wandering marshy landscapes and hunting for food. Researchers have found pottery fragments and stone tools on one side of Lela Lalia. That's true. As sand dunes form and then shift throughout their lives, they swallow and protect ancient remnants of life. Just dig well enough and you might find something that will provide you with a window into the past. It can be ancient fossils, anything from fossilized shells and corals to prehistoric plants. Those can offer precious insights into the history of our planet and the living beings once inhabiting certain regions. Now, it might come as a shock, but in the Sahara Desert, scientists have uncovered well-preserved marine reptiles and fossilized fish within the layers of those ancient sand dunes. They are the remains from the time when the Sahara was covered with a sea millions of years ago. Anyway, it's time to leave that ancient paradise if you want to survive. 4,000 years ago, the wet period came to an end and the Sahara dried out again. Interestingly, our dune didn't begin building up right away. For some time, sand probably blew through but didn't accumulate. Or the dune could have started growing in a different location. And it's a valid theory since scientists have discovered recently that Lelolalia shifts around 1.6 feet every year. It also accumulates about 6,400 tons of sand every year. Now, if you've been inspired by your dune trip and are now eager to explore more of them, I've got some unpleasant news for you. Unfortunately, although there might be star dunes locked in sandstones around the globe, they're super tricky to detect. The problem is, dunes are huge, but they lack a single distinguishing feature. So you'd really need large exposed beds of rock if you want to get a wide enough view to identify a star dune. On the bright side, there surely are places where it might be possible to do such research, but you should be ready to know that it might be just a set of various features that look like other dunes. But if you combine them, you'll say, ah, it's likely to be a star dune. Comment below if you'd like to go on a trip in search of a star dune. Meanwhile, we'll continue our journey. You decide to have some rest and start climbing down the side of the dune. That's when you begin hearing it terrible, haunting sounds. Are there ghosts nearby? Worry not, you're safe. You might have heard of a phenomenon called singing sands. As you walk down some sandy slopes, you disturb the grains of sand. They rub against each other, producing friction that creates those eerie melodies. With each step, the sand beneath your feet comes alive in a ghostly choir of whistles and whispers. The sounds range from low hums to loud, high-pitched wails, as if an otherworldly symphony is echoing through the dunes. But of course, scientists have their own very practical explanation. Attributing this phenomenon to the right atmospheric conditions combined with the unique size, shape, and moisture content of the grains. Now, you've almost made it all the way to the bottom of the dune, but beware of slip faces when a sand dune reaches a certain steepness, it develops a slope. That's the very slip face I was talking about. This slope is usually on the leeward side of the dune and sheltered from the prevailing wind. Sand grains start accumulating on the windward side, slowly creeping along the dune's gentle slope. At one point, they reach the top. Gravity takes over and they start sliding down, triggering a cascading effect. It looks like a miniature sand avalanche, and I wouldn't want to end up in its way. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.